Welcome, guys. This is arguably a pretty hot take, depending on who you ask, but my perspective is unique and nuanced, as I will explain in this video. Firstly, I do need to offer up some disclaimers, though, because I know people love to read a title and then jump to conclusions, leave a nasty comment, and then dip out without actually watching the video or hearing what I have to say. Which, if you do, that's fine, because it just helps with engagement, and it just makes you come off more ignorant than you need to. Anyway, there are certain applications, certain use cases where building a very high powered e-bike is the right fit, but these very niche applications are few and far between for the vast majority of people who are looking to get into e-bikes. Some examples, if you're using your e-bike for a dedicated off-road track use where you want a ton of power because that's the name of the game for the competition, this video and my perspective is not applicable to you. I'm not speaking to you. Or say you've got a side gig for some special photography where you make a million dollars a month selling bath water or whatever, money is no object, then this also doesn't apply to you. Also, you'll notice I have made many high-powered e-bikes on my channel, and this isn't a declaration of me changing my mind or ways of doing things. You may find this hypocritical or even off-putting. Let me explain to you that this is not hypocrisy. I am fully aware of my own stupidity and nonsensicalness. I do things for no good reason all the time, willingly. I waste my own money on useless things and senseless endeavors without a rhyme or reason. A lot of people don't think this way or act this way, however, and insist that I also think and act as they do, but I will not. In fact, a lot of what I do on my channel regarding e-bikes, I don't encourage people to emulate or follow. So let's get into it. This particular video is largely coming from an economics perspective. I don't personally have any hard stance regarding the ethical, legal, or moral perspective on high-powered e-bikes, although a lot of people in this community certainly do. And if you are in this camp of thinking that high-powered e-bikes are the devil and should be banned, then to me, this is just another set of points to even further my arguments. I have been building e-bikes for about six or seven years now and I've learned quite a few things over that time so hopefully I can impart some of the things I have learned and it at the very least makes you think or question what you may believe and why you feel that way. Let's get into why someone would even want to build an e-bike like this in the first place. The answer is pretty straightforward and it all comes down to one thing, the need for speed. Speed can be addicting and for most people just like money you can never have enough. All e-bikes in general are pretty fast, and this is if you compare them to what they are, or are supposed to be, which is bicycles. You'd be hard pressed to find any e-bike that couldn't go as fast as a traditional pedal bike. But once you get up into the higher powered e-bikes, that comparison no longer really applies as they don't share nearly as many parts with bicycles as they do with mopeds and motorcycles. And if you're comparing them to their ICE counterparts, they pale in comparison to what gas motorcycles can do in terms of speed. One of the main problems with speed is that it is very expensive, and when it comes to e-bikes, they are no exception to this. Speed is almost always more expensive. You want something with a faster acceleration or top speed? Expect to pay more for that than one that is slower or doesn't go as fast. Strangely, this is largely irrelevant on e-bikes and even more irrelevant with cars and motorcycles, or I should actually say that it should be more irrelevant, but here we are. I'm not going much into all the legality, but if most e-bikes are regulated to a certain speed, and all cars and motorcycles are also regulated to a certain speed, then it doesn't really matter if your e-bike can go 30 miles per hour or 3,000 miles per hour. If you're obeying the rules, then it's irrelevant. Okay, so what if you're one of the types that's a rebel without a cause and you don't care about playing by the rules? Well, you're going to have to pay for that, handsomely. Most e-bikes that are produced operate at 48 volts. This is a good balanced voltage because it's relatively safe to be around for the amount of power it facilitates. If you want to go faster, 48 volts just isn't going to cut it and you will need to move up to 72 volts. I'm not going to go into voltage potential and how this plays a part in speed. I'll save that for another video. Just trust me bro, if you want to go fast, you need at least 72 volts to get there. 
And when it comes to speed and voltage, the more the merrier. Where this equation comes to crush your dreams of taking your e-bike out on the freeway just for fun is the unprecedented uppercut to your wallet. Higher voltage packs require more battery cells and more cells is more money and you get the idea. You also don't get to partake in the savings of economics of scale because the manufacturers that do make 72 volt packs don't make nearly as much of them due to the demand. So of course they will fetch a higher price. Which you're doubly screwed economically already and we're not even close to being done yet. If you want to go really really fast you may need to even make your own battery because no manufacturer can make the ridiculous output requirements you think you want. Or you'll have to pay someone to do it which you guessed it costs a lot more than just going on Amazon and getting a decently priced 48 volt pack. Let's depart from batteries for a second and talk about the air. It's the crap you breathe and while it may look very transparent from your perspective, it's actually quite girthy and gelatinous and it's also the enemy of speed. Physics are cool bro, push on a thing and you feel it pushing back at you, that's actually how you can feel anything at all. Things give you resistance and your nerves pick that up as something happening and through magical interpretive electrical signals in your head, you can feel things. Well, the air also does that. It just also doesn't seem that way because you're usually not moving fast enough to feel it much. Who here in the class has ever stuck their hand out the window of their car on the freeway? It was quite a different feeling than waving your arm while you're sitting around in your office chair at work. The faster you go, the more air or wind resistance there is. The faster you go, the more money you need to spend to overcome that resistance. You're essentially subscribing to the OnlyFans of air and simping for each extra mile per hour you achieve. You're being a pay pig to molecules that you can't even see. Pathetic. Here is something I learned pretty quickly when I first got into DIY e-bikes. 0 to 40 miles per hour is quite nice, not a whole lot of wind resistance. Sure, there is some, but it's mild. Once you hit 40, things start getting harder and harder for you, just like when you age. The amount of power you need to get even marginally faster than 40 miles per hour gets exponentially more difficult. It is of my experienced opinion that the sweet spot for e-bikes, at least in this day of November 2023, that are using traditional bike frames is 1500 watts. That's still a ton of watts, but there are a lot of unique properties of this wattage that are economically very attractive. For one, a 1500 watt kit is quite common now and can be had for very cheap. Secondly, you don't need a crazy battery to push 1500 watts. 48 volts will get you there easily. No need for expensive, larger, heavier 72 volt packs. Thirdly, this will get you very close to the 40 mile per hour threshold, but not exceeding it. Let's take a look at these real world numbers from my own experience that you could see proven and documented on a ton of my videos on this channel. A $200 roughly 1000 watt hub motor kit at 48 volts will roughly get you to 27 miles per hour. You spend 250 bucks for a 1500 watt hub motor kit at 48 volts will roughly get you to 34 miles per hour. Now look at this, $600 for a 3 kilowatt hub motor kit at 72 volts will roughly get you to 45 miles per hour. And an $800 5 kilowatt hub motor kit at 72 volts will roughly get you to 54 miles per hour. Now notice something peculiar here, to go from 1500 watts to 3000 watts it's more than double the cost, but it's definitely not double the speed increase, not even close. To go from 1500 watts to 5000 watts that is near triple the cost, but not even close to doubling the speed. I hope this drives my point across. I also want to point out that these are just the kit prices, these don't incorporate the battery at all, and as I just said about batteries you have to pay more for the higher voltage batteries which you will need to get up in the higher wattages so this doesn't even take into account how much more expensive it actually is when you incorporate the battery price as well. Going 40 miles per hour on a bicycle is very fast and quite scary. The difference between 20 and 40 is much more dramatic than say 40 and 50, yet you'll have to pay most of the increase in cost to go that extra 10 miles per hour. It's simply not worth it economically. 
Just for sake of argument, I'm going to take a contrarian stance here and say, fine, that's all well and good. I don't care. I'm already into Findom, so I'm just going to buy the biggest battery that will not even really fit on my bike and it's going to go 100 miles per hour. Actually, no, just a battery isn't going to do it for you. If you don't believe me, try hooking up that brand new 600 amp, 120 volt battery to your 36 volt controller and see what happens. Oh, you were thinking of buying a new controller anyway. That's cool. Hook it up to that 500 watt motor. It should make everything so much faster now. Hmm. Were all the phase wires supposed to fuse together as one and instantly demagnetize all your magnets in your motor? That doesn't seem like going faster to me. It does seem very expensive though. All right, maybe I'm wrong. Just get that eight kilowatt rated motor and that should do it. Now we're talking. Those center pole rim brakes should be fine for slowing down from 70 miles per hour, right? Hope you have some suspension going on because hitting a rough patch on the road at freeway speeds can be quite sketchy on a rigid frame bicycle. Maybe time to invest in more than just a helmet too. Losing skin is cheaper, but it is a longer investment time horizon. You sure you want to run those Amazon basic branded tires to 80 miles per hour? Seems much safer if you upgrade those to motorcycle tires. Might also need some motorcycle rims to go with them. For some reason, the steering is twitchy as hell anywhere over 50 miles per hour. I think I might add a stabilizer. You want me to continue with this scenario? Now that you've invested over six grand into your bicycle, it finally goes as fast as you want it to. It goes 73 miles per hour. That's amazing. Well, it was amazing for about three days and then you saw this other guy on YouTube and he went 76 miles per hour and I'm not some chump. I want to be the guy that's faster than all the other guys. I want all that attention from strangers on the internet telling me how cool I am. Well, some of them are. Some of them are telling me I'm stupid and crazy and how I'm a terrible influence towards others, but a lot of them are saying how cool I am. What can I do to be that guy? What do I need to buy to make me faster? You mean my $1,700 custom battery? It doesn't output enough amps and I need to buy the $2,500 one? I guess I can try and sell this one and get that one, all right? I mean, I already spent like six grand on my bicycle. When I think of it, another two grand, that's not that much, right? Now my bike goes 82 miles per hour and I'm the king of the e-bikers. They all wish they could be me. Damn, that guy posted another video and now his bike goes 90? As with most metrics of achievement, things quickly devolve into a carrot measuring contest where everyone wants to be the big man on campus. I personally don't see this practice as a real benefit to anyone beyond maybe taking your bike to a track and competing for sport. At best, it puts yourself in danger and at worst, it incentivizes others to attempt to beat your high score. Again, I don't really have a strong stance on this, but I could certainly see how others would. People are going to do as people do, however, so I don't see this ever stopping regardless of what anyone thinks of it. So, you've modified your bike with all kinds of motorcycle parts and it's very expensive and it goes highway speeds. That's really cool, man. That's a great achievement. How many times did you go 80 miles per hour? Oh, only that one time? It was so scary and you felt like you could lose control and die at any time? I guess that's kind of fun though. You don't ride it on the freeway? If you did, how far do you think it would go on that battery at 80 miles per hour? Only six miles? Yeah, you're right. I can see how dumping hundreds of amps sustainably would drain the battery pretty quickly. And that motor and controller do get really hot. I wonder how long they will last doing that repeatedly. Do you think that battery will degrade faster by pushing it so hard and needing to recharge it so often? I hope you guys are getting my point. Let me offer you yet another alternative view. If it looks like a motorcycle, it rides like a motorcycle, it uses a lot of motorcycle parts, but doesn't go nearly as fast as a motorcycle, not even half as fast, it costs four times the amount a used motorcycle would, you never have to replace a $2,000 battery, it gets about 30 times the range at 70 miles per hour, and you can immediately fill it up and go 30 times more, you can ride it legally and safely on the highway and get to a destination very quickly. Billy, did you ever ask yourself, why don't I just buy a motorcycle? Well, yeah, but this one, it's, it's electric and it's a bicycle. Well, that's true, Billy. That's very true. 
This is my 2001 Honda CBR 600 F4i. I've owned this bike for about eight years now and I bought it for $1,600. It goes 155 miles per hour from the factory and could be modded to go even faster. It gets 50 miles to the gallon and the only things I ever had to do on it were change the oil and replace the tires. I can ride it legally on the freeway. It is very stable at high speeds as it was designed to operate safely at those speeds. E-bikes will never be able to do what motorcycles do because that's not what they were designed for. The only electric motorcycles that can touch my gas-powered bike in terms of performance cost $20,000 and up, and I don't see that gap becoming much smaller anytime soon. But I'm not going to go very fast very often. I don't want to have to pay for registration and insurance or gas. I want to ride on the sidewalk and bike trails. Find me a scenario where the frequency, the amount of times that you're going to be going over 40 miles per hour is justification for paying six times the cost of just getting a nice 48 volt, 1500 watt bike. If you fit that application, that very niche spot of riding your e-bike over 40 miles per hour often enough to justify the increase in cost, then I applaud you. This video does not apply to you. You are the 1% of 0.1% of e-bikers. If you're not in that percentile and are thinking of getting a very fast e-bike, then I hope my arguments have opened your eyes to more sensical, economic, and safer choices. Will I personally continue to waste my money and build stupid e-bikes that go too fast? Of course I will, not because it's the smart thing to do, but because what else is there for me to do here now? Last year I already began gathering parts for a 60 to 80 kilowatt build and it should be pretty fast. I've already made 20 plus 1500 watt bikes and honestly they're still the best in my opinion and I'll continue to make more and I'll continue to preach the gospel of this balanced platform as I really do think it's the smartest and best choice for someone looking for an e-bike that will give them the best of all the worlds at a fair price. If you agree, let me know in the comments. If you disagree, present your best arguments and let's fight it out in the comments. Thanks guys, you're the best. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.